Hey, welcome back y'all. So today I'm going to show you how you can build this dashboard from scratch. But before we go any further, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know if you got any questions or if you want to see specific content down the road and I can add that to my queue. So with any dashboard creation, there's a lot of work that goes into it in the background before you get that final aesthetic that you're looking at right now. Now you're not going to learn how to do all of this stuff in just one video. It's actually going to go over a series of videos, maybe two or three, just depends on how it goes. But you will learn how to connect the data via the model viewer. You're going to learn how to go into table view and make some updates and then power query as well with your final transformations and updates and all those aesthetics really occurring within your visualization pane. So within this dashboard, what I have is five different tables of data. Now it really doesn't matter for this instance on how you acquire your data. Now, as you know, you have numerous different options on how you can select data to be coming in. You can do a data flow, you can do it by web, you can do a SQL Server ID and connect the data that way. And we'll talk about what those mean over time. But for this instance, as long as you have your data acquired, that's really what matters. So the first thing I want to do is talk about why I'm trying to achieve this dashboard, right? So the absence analytics is really what you're looking at right now. And what I want to do is be able to visualize how many people we have authorized, how many we have signed, how many are currently on absence, so not available right now within the unit, how many absence are pending, how many have been denied, and then looking at date bands as well, you know, workflow types and all those kind of micro data points involved with all of those as well, right? Such as, hey, where are they going? Who's their supervisor? Who approved it? So we're not just looking at the surface layer of the data, right? We don't want to just see the totals. We want to see the by name results and then who did what and then who has what so that we can answer not just the first layer of questions that our employer is really asking us, right? So we're, we shouldn't be in the business of answering just the first question, but we should also answer the first question and the next five questions that may arise as well. So that's the way I like to personally look at data, which is why you see the dashboard developed the way it is. All right, so the first thing we want to do when we acquire data after we get data, and I'm going to put a link down below on how you can get data, and we'll talk about that at a later time as well. But the first thing we want to do is go into Power Query. That's always going to be step one for us. All right, so here we have the data coming in in the most raw format. So the first thing we want to do with absence analytics is going to be we're going to promote this first row to headers. So all we're going to do is click on use first row to headers. And now we bump that all the way up, right? And now what we're going to do is we're going to pan right and see which columns are not the appropriate format based upon the auto format that's been applied. All right, so I can see the begin date that's listed here, as you can see, is listed as a whole number. Now it's not a whole number. So by default, it's coming in that way. So the way to get around having an error, so if I clicked here and I clicked on date, for example, it's going to automatically pop in as an error. So we don't want to do that, right? So we're just going to go ahead and delete that step. We're actually going to change it to a text first. Then we're going to change it to a date. All right. And now we have a date format. We're going to do the same thing here. And here we are. There's some columns like location I don't need, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete those. So as long as you know the dictionary of what each term really means or each code really means, it's going to be helpful to understand what you need to remove from your table. So here we have T, S, and N that we don't need. N means not active, S is saved, and T is terminated. So we're just going to go ahead and deselect those so they're not applicable. And with that said, everything else looks fine. I don't need to worry about the other dates just because I'm not going to use them within my calculations. I'm going to go ahead and close and apply. So now it's telling me that there's an error when it comes to the postal code. And I honestly don't even need the postal code. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that column. So I'm just going to go ahead and hover over it, highlight it, and then remove column. All right, so now we're in the mTO table. So we're going to do the same exact thing within Power Query here as well. So by default, all of these steps already occurred for me. So no issues there. The first thing I want to do is I want to go to my authorized mill column and just deselect zero. I'm going to press OK. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this grade column. You can do that by simply right clicking and selecting duplicate. 
So next we're going to split this column by position just so I can split the MPC, so the E and O. So we're just going to split column by number of characters. Go once as far left as possible. We're going to say one. And now we have an MPC split with the actual grade. Now this is going to help over time as we filter data and slice it appropriately based upon the MPCs or the different skill levels that we're looking at. All right, so the next thing we want to do here is change this to a text format. All right, so when this comes up, I always want to make sure that I add a new step. And the reason I do that is because now you can see that the applied steps actually pop in over here. So now I have a historical record on actually what I did. Now I'm going to simply change this column name to MPC, and that's going to be all your changes for MTO. All right, so next we have a skill level translator. There's actually no change that needs to be done here. Everything's already done. If you don't have a promote to header, just go ahead and hit promote to headers, and we're good to go. And this is just going to be an actual Excel table that comes in naturally. So this one is really just going to stay stale over time. There's no changes as it's already coded. And what this is going to help us do is it's going to change certain ranks to grades, skill levels, or it may change the skill levels to grades or ranks or other combinations as well. And I incorporated a key column as well so it can go in sequence if I want to do a certain ascending or descending format based upon the grade, rank, or skill level. All right, so next we have UIC table. So we're going to do once again, use first row as headers, and then we're just going to verify that everything's a text format, which it is. All right, so the last one we're going to work on in Power Query is going to be PSD assigned. So that's going to show all our assigned personnel within the organization. So first thing we're going to do is going to remove the first row here because we actually don't want that row at all. So I'm going to click on remove rows. Then we're going to remove top row. We're going to type in one and press OK. And now it takes off that first row, right? So now we can just promote headers per usual. And now what we want to do is ensure that every single date column that we have within this query is going to be formatted as a date. So if it doesn't change from its original format to a date format, go ahead and try to change it to a text first and then a date. We also see standard remarks three or any of these really remark columns and they're showing as an error. We can just go ahead and delete those. We actually don't need those at all. Or if you really see any air columns within this table, just go ahead and remove them. All right, so the next thing we want to do is right click on soldier job code and we're going to duplicate this column. Now we want to rename the column to MOS. Now we're going to split the column once again by one and then we're going to rename this to final MOS. And now you can see how we're going to draw a connection to the absence analytics as well, right? Because now we have the same type of value. All right, so that's all we have for Power Query. We're going to go ahead and run this, apply it, and then see if we get any errors at all. All right, so now what we're seeing is errors within the PSD side and then M2 as well. So we're just going to go ahead and dig into those by clicking on View Errors. All right, so within the PSD assign, we're just going to go ahead and scroll right up until we find a error bar. All right, so we can see this column has Stakeo 46. We don't need it. It has no relevance in our data. So we can go ahead and delete that column. We have another Stego column that we can remove. And then within the MTO, we have para, so it's the paragraph number or the position. So we're actually going to change this to a text format, but we're not going to do that here because we're still in the folder of the query errors, right? So go back into the PSD assigned. We'll find those columns and then just delete them. All right, so what we want to do is change the para to a text format. Now, if it does not run after you did all these applied steps, go ahead and go back to the change type step here and then try to do that format change to a text and it'll populate all as green with no errors. All right, so now we're going to close and apply. And then another error you might find is a grade copy to. Just go ahead and delete that one as well. And now we'll close and apply. And now we have no errors. All right, so we are completely done with Power Query, at least for this dashboard for the absence analytics. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go into the relationship view, so model viewer, and then now start drawing our relationships. So off the bat, we can see that there's no connections at all. I have my measure tables over here on the left side, and then I have all the tables I brought in on the right side. So I know that my primary roster is going to be the PSD assigned Y. That's where all my people are really located, right? So I'm going to put that in the middle. And then I want to look for unique values that are associated to certain people, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the UIC over to the UIC. And this is going to go ahead and create me a many-to-one relationship that's active. And that's exactly what we want. So we're going to save that. 
All right, and we could tell that's a many to one relationship because the arrow is pointing to where there's many instances. So we know that there's a singular UIC within this table based upon the data that we know and own that's coming in. And there's many people within this roster of personnel that may be associated with a singular UIC. So once again, many in this table and then one unique value in this table. I'm also gonna connect the UIC from the absence analytics to the UIC here as well. And that's gonna be a many to one relationship as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and rearrange these slightly. So next I'm gonna connect my MTO to my skill level translator by the grade. Once again, many to one relationship. And then we're gonna connect the MTO to the UIC. Now something else I wanna do is I wanna now connect my absence analytics to my sign roster. And since I know that there's unique values that people have in here, such as employee ID, I'm going to use that. But you see how it pops up as a one-to-one -one path, but there's ambiguous paths because there's already connections made for these two tables indirectly, right? Through all these other relationships that are going around and they kind of circle back. So what I want to do instead is I want to do a many-to-one. So many from PSD assigned because that's all my people in it in absence analytics may not have people in it because they may not have submitted absence or have one saved. So we're gonna do many to one and we're gonna make this inactive, okay? Because we're gonna activate this based upon when we actually need it. We're gonna make this single and save. All right, so that's it for today's video, folks. So the next one, we're actually gonna dive into table view and go into how we can create calculated columns and then expand upon the dimensions that we already have in place. And then we're going to follow that with all the measures that we need to create as well. And then finally going into visualizations and then creating those so that we're going in a very sequential process so we can see how the data is fully developed over time. With that said, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Leave a like, leave a comment, and until next time.